Hi, I'm JJ Jennings. I'm with Excelsior Mining, and the title of my presentation is 10 Reasons Why You Should Have Met With Me At This Conference. This is the speed dating conference, and uh, you make requests for meetings. Some people say yes, some people say no. This is for everybody say, that said no. It's also 10, which con conveniently is one reason for everybody in this room. So we will be the next new copper producer in the United States. The project's called Gunnison. It's located in Arizona. It's a big deposit, five billion pounds of copper. And what makes this project special is we're not gonna dig this copper out of the ground, we're going to pump it out of the ground using injection and recovery boreholes, just like you see right here. So that's a photo from our well field. That's an injection well. We pump down dilute sulfuric acid. The acid goes down into the copper ore body, sees the copper, dissolves the copper, gets pumped back up to the surface for standard processing. So you may not be familiar with in situ recovery. It's a very common mining method used all the uranium, for example, that in mined in the United States is mined this way. It doesn't really matter the metal. If you can find a deposit that is amenable to this kind of mining, then good for you because the operating costs are lower. As I say, we're going to be the next new copper producer in the United States. We're about to start mining operations any day, and we expect to produce our first uh, copper cathode sheet before the end of the year. So that puts us on a very exciting spot in terms of the life cycle of a deposit. You've probably seen this chart before. Um, you know, you come to these uh, speed dating conferences and we see what the investors are looking for. And the thing that I see that is most common is investors are looking for advanced stage development projects. Well, you cannot get more advanced than Excelsior Mining. We are about to make the leap to producer status. We're the one in a thousand that actually do it. And traditionally that warrants a re-rating of the share price. We're fully financed. So this might be one of the reasons we didn't get some meetings because we don't need anyone's money. We have, uh, if you want to own Excelsior Mining, you've got to buy it in the market. We expect to go cash flow positive in the spring. So if you become a shareholder of Excelsior Mining, and I'm hoping some of you will, then you can do so without any fear of being diluted down via an equity uh, placement. The biggest shareholder is Greenstone Resources. They got 47.7% of Excelsior Mining. That's a private equity firm out of London, England. X Extrata Mining, XJP Morgan. Triple Flag provided the project financing the, uh, through a streaming agreement that is an, uh, they're part of the Elliott Management Group, a large hedge fund. Which leads me to my next point that Excelsior has been very successful at attracting these major base metal institutions into our deal. And these, these firms have the resources and the time to fully vet our project. That's $140 million there of smart money. And in this market, which is still a very challenged market, only the best projects get financed. And so having these firms in our deal is an endorsement to the quality of the project and to the ability of the management team to execute. One of the things that attracted these firms was our economics. The backbone of our story is all economic. We have the best internal rate of return for any new base metal project coming online. This is a chart by RBC. All those little dots, I know it's hard to see, they represent new projects which are scheduled to come online over the next few years. You see Excelsior at the top with the, the highest internal rate of return. Now the x-axis is size, so we're not the biggest. We're not the biggest by a long shot, but our economics are among the best. Our base case study from our feasibility study used a $2.75 long-term copper price, and that produced a 40% internal rate of return. So I will skip on. This is Johnson Camp. Um, Johnson Camp was an open pit operation. It, it just happened to be sitting right beside our deposit. It just happened to go into receivership. And so we were able to buy it out of receivership for $8.4 million. Saved us about uh, 50 to $60 million on our CapEx. Uh, it will serve as our initial processing facility. So the capacity at this plant is 25 million pounds per year. We'll start off at 25 million pounds, and then we will uh, expand via an expansion to full production of 125 million pounds in about two to three years down the road. So this is Johnson Camp, not long after we bought it in 2016. And this is what it looked like during the construction phase. This is uh, April of this year. Those are new asset tanks going in in the foreground. That's the same camera angle. This is what it looks like now. Uh, the and this is the look at our well field, our production well field. So the construction is 99% done. And this is my, my point. 
Uh, again, this is the sixth reason why you should have met with me at this conference. It's real and it's happening. Because so often in the junior mining space, despite what you read with the press releases, it's not real and it's not happening. If you become a shareholder of Excelsior Mining, you can do so with confidence that yes, we are about to go into production and we've got the means to get there. This is the most environmentally friendly base metal project on the planet today. When we are done mining this, on the surface and below the surface, you will not be able to tell that we were ever there. That is completely unlike a conventional mine, like an open pit operation. An open pit fills with groundwater. That groundwater becomes acidic. Now you've got acid mine drainage. That is an impossible outcome with in situ recovery. This is a photo from an in situ recovery uranium project in Wyoming. You can see there's no scarring of the landscape. It's all very quiet. You can walk around in our well field and you will not be able to tell if it's on or off. It's very quiet. There's no trucks driving around all over the place. We're a really good neighbor and that helps keep us in good standing with local communities, which in turn helps keep us in good standing with the regulators. So I'm, I'm saying, all, saying all these great things about in situ recovery, and you might say, well, if it's so great, why doesn't everybody do it? Well, the short answer is they would if they could, but you need a very specific geology in order to mine copper this way. I'll tell you what, you need three things. One, it's gotta be oxidized copper. Same thing that's coating the Statue of Liberty down here. It's gotta be naturally fractured, naturally broken, and it's gotta be down below the water table. So our, our deposit was an, is an oxidized deposit, was sitting at surface at one time, somehow, some way, it got shoved down 600, 800 feet down below the water table, and that is the million and one anomaly that makes this all possible. Uh, there were a number of projects. That geology, by the way, that I just described, it's only been seen really in Arizona. There were a number of projects that were all mined out by the late 1990s. Today, there's only two big ones left, ours and this one. This is the Florence Project. It's owned by Taseco. This is their test facility. And since April of this year, they've produced thousands of pounds of copper. And so if you're looking for proof of concept, uh, here it is. And of course, we will join them as a producer here uh, later this year. The management group here, the management team is credible. They do what they say they're gonna do. We've done a really good job of hitting our milestones. We've been totally on schedule for at least the last five years. Uh, Stephen Twyroll, Rolling Good Game, they have big mining company pedigrees. They've operated mines around the world. They had their own junior also. They had a junior nickel project, which they took from development, put it into production, and sold it. So they've been through this before. My point here of this slide is that they have genuine operations experience, which, believe it or not, in the junior mining space is not common. I'm from Vancouver. I say this all the time. I'm from Vancouver where every single tower in Vancouver is filled from the top to the bottom with junior mining companies. They're all run by great management teams, but the vast majority have never put a mine into production. The vast majority never will. And we would not have been able to attract the quality of an investor that we have unless we uh, had gentlemen who have done it in the past. And the data that they've been producing indicated that or demonstrated that we have the ability to put this into production successfully. This is my last point. I'm going to make a point on copper. I don't know how I'm doing for time. I think I'm running out of time. There's no clock here, but I will make a point on copper because it's all we're going to produce. Uh, this is a one project, a one commodity story. This is a graph by RBC, and it's a long-term consensus price of the price of copper, and it's, it's around $3. Um, the beauty of Excelsior Mining is that I don't have to stand up here and give you a dozen reasons why the copper price is going to go higher. I believe the copper price is going higher. But if you have low operating costs, you can be successful at just about any spot price. It's also the key to our risk management. The copper price today is around 260. The copper price can collapse. It can go down below $2 a pound. We're still in business. We're still making money. Our competitors are having a tough time of it. So, that's my presentation. That's 10 reasons why you should have met with me at this conference. I spoke very quickly. Had you met with me, I would not have had to speak this quickly. I hope you'll take a look at Excelsior Mining. Thank you.